Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler and in today's video we are going to be focusing on the back ends of our axial capras. We're going to be changing this from a drag axle that comes in the RTR or kit version and we're going to turn it into a rear steer axial capra. I can... Okay guys, let's explain just a few things that are going to be absolutely necessary to get this thing into be a four-wheel steer axial capra. Now, one of the most important features is not even the truck itself, it is actually the radio that you're going to use. So I decided to go with a FlySky GT5 radio for two reasons. Number one is the control that I have that can be used for rear steer, which is a dial up here, and it gives you full independent control of the rears over the fronts, so I can point the rears in any direction. It will hold the rear in that direction, and I can also steer the front independently. This radio also has a crawl mode where you can point them in sync, where all four tires will point the same direction or the opposite direction, and they will steer at the same rate at the same time. I prefer to have fully independent control of the rears. However, that does mean that it takes two-handed controls. And what I mean by that is that I have to drive with one thumb on my steering wheel, and then I take my second hand and control my rear steer, which is not here right now. So yeah, it does require two-handed driving, which is why I have a GoPro mount on here to make my off-road videos so that I can drive two-handed and still record at the same time. Although that may be a little bit unique to me. So the factory axial radio that comes with the truck is a three channel so that you have steering and throttle and then you also have the dig feature. What's great about this Flysky GT5 is that it has six channels so you can maintain your dig function along with four wheel steer. Now, if you guys are going to a different radio, I just don't have the experience with different radios, so I don't know what kind of control setup you're going to put on your truck. However, you will need at least a four channel radio to go ahead and do four wheel steer with the dig function as well. All right, I'm gonna quickly cover which tools you're actually going to need to convert this thing, and they are very, very simple. Two millimeter Allen, 1.5 millimeter Allen, and you need a wheel wrench to get the nuts off of your wheels. That's all that's required to install this and change everything over to four wheel steer. Super simple, really easy. You should have already had these things to work on your trucks in the first place. Okay guys, let's start with the first process, which is super simple. We're just going to remove the rear tires off of the truck. Okay, now that we've got our rear tires off of the truck, it's time to disconnect the entire rear axle out of the truck. So what that means, is removing the upper links here. There's one screw for each side, and then the lower links along with the shocks, one screw for each side. You can go ahead and leave the shocks installed up top. They will just go ahead and hang there from their mount in the top. Let's get it done. Two millimeter Allen on these ones. That's the majority of what we're going to be using today is the two millimeter. The 1.5 is what the cover of the receiver box uses on the axial capra. So if your radio is still in there, then that's what you'll need to access it. If you have moved your receiver, then uh, that's gonna be up to you on which tool you need. And there we have it. We've removed our standard rear axle out of the axial capra. The great news is that when you go to put a front axle housing on the rear of this truck, is that you actually have a lot of the parts that you already need, including the gear set, as well as your portal gears. So you're gonna save some money by not having to purchase those when you put your front axle housing on the rear of the Capra. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and disassemble our rear axle back here. So you're gonna want to take a two millimeter Allen and pull your drive shaft off of the ring and pinion gear here. And then we're gonna to wanna to pull the portal covers off because you have to pull the axle shafts out before the ring gear inside the axle will be able to come out. So pull each portal cover off, take the gears out, and then go ahead and pull that center diff out. I'm gonna show you how to do it. I just wanted to give you a quick explanation before we go into fast forward. All right, guys, as we can see on the inside of the axle here, we do have a bearing on the inside of the plastic shaft. We have the upper portal gear that is attached to the axle shaft, and then that axle shaft goes ahead and slips on out. 
This is our portal cover, which also holds on to the lower portal gear. These portal covers swap back and forth between the front and rear, so you actually do not have to disassemble this any more than this point. Uh, you do have the upper bearing in the portal cover, and then we have a lower bearing that sits behind this lower portal gear. So those are both in there, everything's spinning smooth, and that's going to be exactly what you need for a front axle housing swap. On our rear axle disassembly, there is a bearing on the bottom side of the portal. You can go ahead and take an axle shaft, put it inside of that bearing, and work it out and remove this because you will be able to use this on a front axle housing. So go ahead and save those bearings. That'll save you from purchasing an extra two bearings. All right, now we are removing the four screws that are holding our differential housing into the axle. Go ahead and remove those four screws, again, with a two millimeter driver. Okay, we've removed the four screws. We've removed our two portal covers along with our axle shafts that hold this center ring gear in. Go ahead and grab this housing. It's a pretty good fit. So once it's removed, you do have your pinion gear in here, and then you've got your ring gear in the housing. These are unsealed bearings because they are sealed in, within the axles. So you just go ahead and grab those outer bearing edges. You can slip this guy out. This thing is going to be packed with grease, so be sure to just be aware that your hands may get a little bit dirty. There should be a little bit of excess grease on the inside of this housing as well. This rear housing is completely stripped, so you can go ahead and set that aside as we're going to move on to installing all of these parts into our front axle housing. And I'm gonna tell you guys where you need to start purchasing parts because there were a few that I overlooked and I wanna help you guys avoid doing that because once you get started on your rear steer, you kinda just wanna get it done. You don't wanna sit there waiting for shipping after you realize you forgot some parts. All right guys, something very important to know. When you order your Axial Capra front axle housings from Axial, these are the plastic housings, nothing special. They're very affordable. Um, I believe it's like 15 bucks for the front housing. Um, it comes with three molded plastic parts, so you just need to know which parts you're actually getting and what parts you actually need. So, it's going to have the axle housing itself. It's going to have your servo mount, which screws up top. And a quick note there, it does not come with the hardware to mount that. Those are some short little screws there, and then they have the beveled 45 degree head on them. They are not button cap screws. I'm sure you'll recognize these guys here as they are not the button head screws. So just be aware you will need two of those in addition to this housing. So if you're picking up hardware, go ahead and order two of those. Then on the differential housing, the rear axle diff housing will slip right into the front axle housing because it was a good design on Axial's part. So you don't have to remove your gears. If for whatever reason you just want to replace it with the new plastics, the old pinion gear just pushes straight out right there. And then there is a larger bearing on the inside and a smaller bearing on the outside to help support that shaft. I'm gonna just go ahead and swap it directly in here. So if you're changing that out, just be aware there are two bearings that go into this. But your old housing is exactly the same and you should have the bearings there. Um, while you have everything apart, be sure to spin everything and make sure that all the bearings are good. If for whatever reason any of them are bad, go ahead and replace them while you're here. You may as well save the time and not have to do this again. Again, one of the great design features of these axles is that the ring and pinion gears drop right into the, into the housing. So this one's right out of the rear axle housing and it will go right into the front axle housing. And then at this point, let's go ahead and put our pinion gear over the ring gear. And it is a bit of a snug fit and it kind of snaps down in here just like that. Go ahead and give it a spin, make sure everything's meshing up nicely. I have not installed this yet. But uh, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and put our four screws to hold this guy in place into the housing. And then we would have started along our process of putting the front axle on the truck. All right, now it's time to talk about where we need to start purchasing more parts. On the inside of these axle housings, there is a carrier bearing that helps support the shaft on the front axle. The rear axle does not need a bearing right here because the portal cover is what supports its end. However, on the front axle, because we have to support the inside shaft and the outside shaft, there's a bearing that presses in right here. And so I have gone ahead and installed that on this side of the axle. So just be aware of that. And then obviously the second part that we're going to need for these front axles are axle shafts. And they're going to be these axial universal shafts. So these are not from an SCX 10 II or anything like that. They are absolutely the Capra axles. You have to order the front Capra axles 
because it has the square drive for the portal gears, as well as these axle housings are much wider than a standard SCX-10 too. So these guys slip down in here and then you've got to get that square drive on this end aligned with the ring and pinion gear inside the axle. And then the machining on here steps up so that it has a nice snug fit against the bearing. So everything has minimum tolerances going on here. And there we go. Now, when we spin our axle shaft, it starts rotating our ring and pinion gear here. All right, guys, on your servo mount that mounts on top of the axle, there are two different sides to this thing. There is a forward side and then there is a back side. The forward side has a squared edge along the bottom and then the back side has a 45 degree bevel. You want the front of your servo to sit on the completely flat side. So you want the flat side towards the curry emblem and not towards the differential side. So go ahead and put the square side facing towards the back of the car so that when you install your servo, it has a nice flat surface to sit up against. All right, moving on to our Capra knuckles. Now, this is another part that you will have to order is the knuckles. I don't remember if they come with portal covers or not. I don't think they did, um, but a very important thing to know on this, I actually got this wrong for quite a long time, is that there is a bearing in these portal cover, in these portal knuckles here, so that there is a large opening bearing that fits around the machine surface on this side of your axle shaft as well as the portal cover has a bearing to support the end of this little shaft. So this little tiny shaft part has two bearing supports along there. One of the key features that this bearing really does for this knuckle is it actually seals it up. Um, I did not install this for about six months and my portals kept filling up with sand because my area has very fine sand around there and I couldn't figure out why. And it's because that axle shaft did not have the upper bearing going on in there. There we go, you can see that blue in there where this thing is rotating. Um, I forgot to install that. I didn't know that they needed it until I took apart my RTR front end and realized, hey, there's a bearing on the front axle. I need to be sure to get one to put in my rear axle, which is a front axle at this point. Another note is go ahead and install the lower bearing here on your knuckles so that you have one in the upper and one in the lower for your front portal knuckles. Right, so now that we've got our bearings installed here, another piece of hardware that is not included is these oddball little screws here that actually are the knuckle screws. So these have a flat machine surface so that the portal knuckle can actually pivot around there freely. So you will need to buy these screws. I think they come in a six pack, which is good because you're gonna need four of them to get these installed on here. I tried to use normal screws. It does not work. You have to order these. They're very inexpensive. And I'll be sure to throw the part number up on screen. But this is one of the parts where I messed up and didn't realize that I needed these to get this thing done. And it was one of the last parts I was waiting for. All right, bit of a uh, snug fit because I've got some sand and grit down in between the shaft and the bearing. So go ahead and make sure that bearing's pressed all the way into the knuckle. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and phase it with it installed in the knuckle. Another key piece of info is that these are right and left-handed. So you wanna make sure that you have your steering link attachments facing towards the Curry emblem on the axle because you cannot run your steering link through your four link setup. So you wanna have this on the exterior pointing towards the rear of the buggy. Go ahead and install these guys. Now you don't wanna crank these down too tight Otherwise, they can start limiting how freely they move. You just want to get them kind of bottomed out and make sure they're in there, but you don't need to like really cinch these down. Okay, guys, now we've got our differential, our axles, and our portal knuckle on here, along with our bearings installed on the interior, as well as the support bearing for the inner axle shaft here. Now we can go ahead and take our portal covers, which we have left assembled because we did not need to disassemble it to do this. Make sure that you've got your upper bearing in here. You can stick an axle shaft into the, one of these and make sure that your bearings are still good and freely spinning. Um, I highly recommend that, especially depending on how long you've been running your Capra. If it's been a while, it's very possible those have gone bad. So be sure to feel those. Now the axle stub shaft there is going to slip into this bearing. And one last thing we need to do is go ahead and throw our upper, upper portal gear in here. So you want to slip this guy right there so you have two shafts fitting their way into precision fit bearings as well as the gear mesh 
So it takes a little bit of fiddling, but everything should slide right into place if you get it right, just like that. Now, go ahead and take your portal cover screws and we're gonna get these guys installed. This is where having a drill really speeds things up. So let's go ahead and grab my drill. Just be sure not to tear apart your portal covers or the knuckles themselves. I usually don't tighten up my screws with my drill. I just run them down to where I can see that they're starting to touch. Awesome guys, we are making serious progress on this axle. I'm gonna do the other side off camera so that you don't have to sit through it again. That's exactly how I install these. Make sure that this thing pivots freely and that everything else is rotating freely and smoothly because if there's any kind of binding, let's figure it out and fix it now. Um, very likely you may have missed a bearing in one of these portal covers, so be sure you get all of them in there before you put them together. Let's get to it. Okay guys, at this point, we need to add more parts to our shopping list. We need extra steering links. This is something that I was kind of aware of and kind of forgot until I got it put together the first time I went, oh crap, I haven't ordered my steering links yet. So you guys may notice on the back of the capper here, I've got those brass links underneath it. Those are from In The Works RC. And In The Works RC also makes this curved front steering rod sitting right here. So I ordered the front steering rod actually when I put the rear steer on the truck and I ended up putting it on the front of my truck just for a little bit extra clearance for tighter steering. And then I put the factory links on the rear. Something else you need to add to your shopping cart for this project, guys, unfortunately these things start to add up pretty quick, is uh, the hardware to hold your steering linkage on your knuckles. So be aware of that. One side is longer so that it can pass through two links. And then the other side is shorter to only pass through the knuckle itself holding and securing your link on one side. Our front axle is complete. There's a couple things I just wanted to reiterate and highlight once more. You need the hardware for the steering knuckles to go into the housing. You do need the knuckles themselves. You need the housing, which comes with the diff cover and the servo mount. So you will need the hardware for the servo mount too. The old hardware that held your diff in the rear axle will work for the front axle as well. And then you're also going to need the support bearings on the inside here. And then just make sure that the portal covers themselves and the knuckles are fully loaded with the correct bearing sizes that you need. The axle input does have the larger uh, inside diameter bearings to support the axle shaft on these knuckles. So just wanted to re-highlight the parts that go into this that just aren't available from your rear axle. However, the portal gears, the portal covers, uh, and the differential is all 100% transferable. That's how I did it when I first did the rear steer on my Capra. Okay guys, now let's go ahead and put the links back onto the axle. And another thing you're gonna wanna do probably while the axle is out is route the wires for your servo. I ran my wires under the rear of the cage and then it comes up right between the driver cage here where the inlet is for the uh, radio box in the back of the Capra. You just pop the lid off of that and it lets you run your wire right up through there. We're gonna plug it into the radio in a second, but that's how I routed my wiring on this truck. So the servo itself, I just left the servo horn set up on there. So I know that this is the side that I wanna run it. Depending on which side you want your drag link set up, you can flip flop your servo back and forth to dictate which side it ends up on. Make sure that your servo mount has the flat side up against your servo so that your servo sits flush down on here. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw in our servo while mine is wired up in the truck. I never fully removed it because it's kind of a pain for me to do. And I didn't quite wanna go that far for this video. So we just need to get this screw installed on the servo horn here to our drag link. The long bar is the tie rod. And then I usually like to throw some Loctite on the servo horns just because it's pretty typical that these like to walk themselves off. Now all we gotta do is get this thing linked up in the bottom. Your shocks go on the outside mounts and then your upper links obviously go on the top and then your lower links sit on the inside of your shocks on the bottom. Halfway in there, the hardware should be the same from the front to the rear axle. That's no issue there. You don't have to purchase new hardware for that. Look at that guys. We are dangerously close to having rear steer on our trucks ready to run. Now let's go ahead and pop open the receiver box 
And let's get our servo installed and I'll show you the channels that I set mine up on to have fully independent control. Like I say, this will vary between what your controller has and what mine has. So depending on your setup, these instructions may not apply. I run my Flysky GT5 rear steer on my channel five dial. So we're gonna pull out this receiver and we're gonna plug this guy into channel five. Okay guys, we've got this thing plugged into channel five. Let's power up the truck and make sure that this is working and that I got the servo plugged in in the correct direction. So like I say, I have mine set up on the dial right here so I can control the rear steer independent of the front. I can do whatever I want with the rears and the fronts can do independent of the rear. Super fun, super awesome setup. I can point them away from each other, I can point them in the same direction. I can steer around while my rear steer sits in one spot. I think this is the ultimate control setup for the rear steer. Unfortunately, it does require two-handed controls. So if you want them to mirror each other, you're gonna have to figure out how to do that on your own. I'm not the expert on it. I've also seen some radio setups where they have them set up on click buttons to where they have a left setting, a center setting, and a right setting. So there's no in-between area. It literally just kicks all the way right, it kicks all the way left, or center. So that's an option too, although I haven't done it, so I'm not gonna give you instructions on something I don't know how to do. So this is how I run my setup. I've just got my Flysky GT5 radio in there. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck all the wires down into there because it's a little rat's nest in this, underneath this box. Um, and then we just throw the cap on top. It tucks all of it away. You can't see how messy it is. And it actually ends up looking like a pretty clean install at the end of this. The number one and most important feature is having a radio that is capable of controlling a rear steer setup and allowing you to also run the dig unit if that's something you want to do. I run both. I run rear steer and dig on this truck. Uh, what's great about these Flysky GT5s is they're very affordable. They're about $60. Um, affiliate links down below to purchase the parts that you need to rear steer convert your truck. I would greatly appreciate if you guys use those because I mean I'm giving you as much information as possible here and making sure that you get it all right the first time around. Now one more thing I kind of want to touch on is the uh, rear steer modification. Actually your servo comes up and contacts your cage. I don't care at all. I run it to where this thing sits on the cage and that's what controls my ride height in the rear is that I don't even run shocks. I don't even run springs on my shocks anymore. I just let this thing run fully slammed in the rear and it gives me a nice low ride height, but the servo still slips around on the axle and it can still articulate just like normal. I've seen people cut the rear of the cages out so that the truck sits lower. I've heard some people modifying the receiver box. I just let the cage right on top of the servo and it has never caused me any kind of issue. It just rubs the top of the servo a little bit. No big deal. So that's how I run mine. There are other options out there. However, this one's a pretty simple setup and I have not modified the cage in any way. Um, I just run the factory shocks and I run no springs on them. So I'm still getting full articulation and uh, I'm not riding inside of it. So I really don't care if it's a rough ride and I've seen pretty good performance out of it. Well guys, my name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. I hope this really helped you out. Again, there are affiliate links down below. It's how you can say thank you is by using those links to pick up the parts that you need. And of course, if you want to support your local hobby shop, I have no argument against that. But if you guys are ordering online, it would help my channel out. I would greatly appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the tutorial of how to rear steer your Capra. I'm sorry if it turned out to be a pretty long video, but I really just wanted to cover every little detail so you guys knew exactly what you're getting into and exactly which parts you need to order in addition to the normal housing and the parts that you already had in your rear axles. So what's great about this is you do have quite a bit of the parts available out of your rear axle, but there are a few you do need to add. I think in total when I did this, it added up somewhere to around $200 to do. It's not, an innocent, it's not an inexpensive mod to do. However, this thing is super capable and I've had a ton of fun going out and wheeling this thing. I would absolutely recommend it if it's something you're interested in doing, depending on the terrain that you're on as well. If there's something where you don't really see a need for rear steer, dig is extremely helpful as well, which comes with the truck already. So I would strongly suggest getting your endpoints set correctly on dig. It's a useful tool for sure. However, rear steer can get you into some places where a tag axle rig just can't get itself into. 
uh, depending on the terrain that you have. I hope you guys enjoyed it. My name is Logan with West Desert Wheeler. Follow me on Instagram. Use those links below. I would greatly appreciate it. Drop a comment if it helped you learn how to do this. I would love to hear you guys' feedback and let me know what setups you're running on your Axial Capras. I'm definitely curious to hear that as well. We will see you guys in the next one. Keep the rubber side down.